Hey all, what's going on? Jonathan here. So it's been a little while since I've posted a video. Uh, sorry about that. Got busy with school and then my brother shot that monster buck. So I made the video, called it The Recovery. It's kind of our first, uh, you know, short film, more cinematic type of video. I'll link it up here for you if you haven't seen it. Go check it out. It's an awesome video. It's a great memory for my brother and the rest of my family. Um, so today we're going to talk about duck decoys. So duck season's coming up next weekend and had a buddy out from California named Wally, give you a shout out Wally, um, reach out to me and ask me some questions about rigging duck decoys and uh, he actually found some information in one of our really old videos that I just shot using my cell phone so I figured we'd do a more updated video with some of the better equipment. Um, so I guess I'll first talk about the different types of rigging and things like that and then we'll get into how to rig a decoy. <laughs> types of rigs that you can use. You can do a Texas rig, which we'll talk about today, that's pretty common. It uh, is probably the easiest rig to, to be able to use in the field. It's nice and simple. There's not a ton of pickup involved, and uh, but it's a little bit harder to make. <coughs> then you can use, um, you know, your typical wraparound rig. So in the wraparound rig, you're going to wrap all your line around the decoy, and then you're going to put the weight either on the keel or over the head. Uh, so here I have a wraparound. So with a wraparound, you're going to typically use two types of weights. The first type of weight you're probably going to end up using is an L weight. It's a, kind of a U weight also is the, another name for it. It's basically an L shape. And I like to use the ones from Killbox Gear. The ones from Killbox Gear have a little thumb tab, which when you're wearing gloves, and just even when you're not wearing gloves, it's just so much easier to be able to grab it and pull it off of the keel. So typically these come with a, a bungee cord. I'm not sure why the one isn't on this one. I must have cut it off. And you tie your cord to the bungee cord, and then you wrap the bungee cord, stretch it out, and tighten that L shape up against your keel. Hold it nice and firm. You can throw it right in your bag. You're good to go. With that thumb tab, nice and easy, grab the tab, pull it out, and you're good. Otherwise, it's just tough reaching in around the keel. So another uh, weight you'll typically see with a wraparound weight is a strap weight or a long mushroom weight. It's basically just a long weight. Uh, this one has a mushroom on the end, a strap weight. I might have one, actually. No, I don't. Strap weight is basically just a long piece of lead. Uh, you just tie your, your cord to this, and then you just wrap it around your keel like that, and it has the same purpose. Uh, you just have to do the bending and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you're going to go with the wraparound, definitely recommend the Killbox Gear L weights. I'll link all of the uh, equipment and stuff like that down below. Um, another weight you might see is an H weight. Uh, these are typically used for larger decoys. I use them for Canada geese or if you're in a tied scenario or you have a lot of line out. Um, so the premise with this is you wrap all of your line around the H weight and then when you throw it out, you just like loop it through so it doesn't come undone. But then when you go to hunt, you unloop it, throw it out, and this unwinds itself to the bottom. And then if you're hunting in a tide, as your decoy rises with the water rising, this will unfold itself. So then the, the decoy doesn't float away um, or stay too deep. And like I said, these are nice because they do that. They're heavy though, and they're big, and they're bulky, and you either have to just leave them hanging, you know, all wrapped up, or some guys, you know, just throw them over the head like that. But that's kind of hard to do if you have a lot of line. So I like to use these if I'm using Canada's. Uh, usually I'll throw Canada's out a little deeper, or if it's faster water, I'll use these. Um, I think I have four Canada's rigged with this with 30 foot of line on each of them, because I hunt one spot and it gets pretty deep quick. So that's your H weight, another common weight. Those are your most common types of weights. You know, there's some triangle weights, some semicircular weights, and all that kind of stuff. But other than your weights, you're going to need some crimps. Uh, I will link these crimps down below. I'm running a little low, so I'm going to show you another alternative you can also use. And then you're going to need a swivel. Um, and then just some pliers and knives or cutters or whatever. And obviously your decoy. <coughs> so, the first step is you need to know what type of environment you're hunting and how much line you want to use. With a Texas rig, typically I'll go anywhere from three feet of line to six feet of line. I don't go above six feet just because then it gets to be a hassle. Um, it's probably more like five and a half feet. Uh, with the strap weights, the weights that will wrap around your keel, I will go up to 20 feet of line because I hunt uh, the lakes a lot and sometimes you get deeper out there. 
um, and I'm not always using a long line most of the time. Though. So with the strap weight, it's nice. You can just keep wrapping de uh, cord around your decoy keel and then just strap your weight on. You're good to go. Throw it in your bag. With a Texas rig, uh, you'll probably see you know pictures or videos of the guys you know throwing a whole bunch of decoys over their shoulder. That's what a Texas rig is. Um, so let's make a three foot Texas rig, just make it nice and simple. So you're going to use your cord. I like to use PVC cord. I found that it lasts the best out of any. So this one, so like let's say I wanted it to be three feet. So this is like three and a half to four feet. So you always want to start a little longer because you can't add cord as easily as you can take it away. <coughs> and then I'm going to take my snap swivel. So it's basically like a big snap swivel that you would use for fishing. I will link that down below too. And you're going to take your crimp. You're going to feed one end of the cord through the crimp, feed the other end through the swivel, and then feed it back through the crimp. So this doesn't need to be a big loop, just enough that it can move around. Your swivel is what's going to be providing your movement at the decoy. So as you can see, it's a pretty small loop right on the uh, swivel there. And I'll take some pliers, and I usually do one big crimp over the whole thing, and then I'll go to each side and crimp each side down. You do not want to skimp on the crimp. So obviously you can buy all of this stuff, you know, pre-made, pre-done, just snap it on your decoys, you're good to go. Uh, I've bought some in the past. The only issues I've had, I won't bash any brands or anything, but the only issues I've had are that the crimps come undone. And then, you know, you, you're going to grab decoys, slick, uh, sticking them on your carabiner, and next thing you know, a decoy is in there and it's floating down the, the creek or whatever. Um, so if I do it by myself, then I can blame myself for not crimping it hard enough, and I can't blame the factory. So the next step we're going to do, so that's on our, our swivel, so we're going to take our egg weight or our barrel weight. I actually didn't talk about this one earlier. So the last type of weight, the weight you're going to use for your Texas rig, is a barrel sinker. It's basically just a big barrel sinker like for fishing. You're just going to feed your line through it, and it goes all the way down to the swivel. Uh, some guys will use <coughs> an L weight for the barrel weight because it will help catch on things a little easier, especially if you're hunting fast current. Only problem with that is it doesn't slide up and down the cord as easily. Uh, okay, so on the other end of the cord, so this is going to be the cord that's going to be on the bottom or the cord that you're going to, uh, you know, be holding your decoys with. So <coughs> I can't find the rest of my crimps. So one type of crimp that you can use. I've actually used these in the field to replace uh, crimps that are broken from ones that I've bought pre-done. Are just electrical crimps. So these are just little electrical crimps. You can do the same thing. Feed your line through it, and then loop it back through. So now with this, you want to leave a loop on the end. I usually like to leave a loop that I can fit my entire hand through. So if I can fit my hand through it like that, that's how I, I like to leave it. And then you just crimp it down. So the reasoning for the big loop, you know, a lot of the pre-made ones have a, a little loop, you know, you can stick a couple fingers in, is I'm out grabbing decoys, I pick this up, grab the cord, throw the decoy, just let my hand slide up to the loop. Then I can stick my hand with gloves on, because I made the big loop, through that, take my big carabiner and I'll clip it on. So usually I'll walk out with a big carabiner I'll grab a decoy, pick it up, grab the cord, throw the decoy so I get to the bottom of the, the cord fast, take the cord, clip it on my decoy, which I'll usually have clipped to my waders or my waiting belt. And then I'll just keep walking and doing the same thing. Grab the, grab the cord, clip it on, good to go. Just walking with a whole bunch of decoys. When you're done, unclip the clip, throw them over your shoulder, good to go. And then with the snap swivel, just stick it on the keel of your decoy. There you go about a three foot cord. The snap swivel is nice because what I'll do is if I know I'm going to hunt an area for a couple days that's all five foot water and I still want to use my uh, decoys that I have the three foot cords on, I'll just make a bunch of extra rigs and then snap them out because I don't have eight million decoys. I've right? only got a, a couple dozen. So then I'll snap them out so they're all the same length and it does help provide motion so that decoy can move and spin freely without having to tug on the cord with the weight at the bottom. So as you can imagine, you throw, these are nice, you just throw it out, weight falls to the bottom, grab it, you pick it up, weight falls down to the bottom, good to go. 
no bags needed or anything like that. And usually what I'll do is when I get a bunch of them, take them, tie, I'll, I'll pull them all together, and then I'll either put like a, they make like the wraps. You just put a wrap around the bottom of it so they all stay nice and tight and your cords don't get tangled. Or you can just make a simple overhand knot in it and they won't come undone then. So that's a quick uh, little tip on how to rig decoys, particularly your, your puddle ducks. Uh, your single decoys didn't get into long lines or anything like that. We'll get into that in another video. So hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully it was a bit informative for you and we'll get some more duck hunting tips and tricks and things like that coming out now that duck season is starting to get here. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and comment and subscribe. And uh, we've got more content coming out every day. And usually try to do one to two videos um, every other day. So sometimes it's a video every day, sometimes it's every other day. I uh, had a little bit of a gap with the last two weeks, but we're getting right back on track. So thanks for watching.